Medical care in Nigeria has over the years been criticized. The quality of Nigerian healthcare institutions is generally considered rather poor. A major problem afflicting the healthcare system in Nigeria is considered to be the brain drain of doctors and medical staff. It is estimated that there are four doctors for every 10,000 inhabitants in the country with over 180 million people. Over the years, the health workforce has remained concentrated in urban tertiary health care centers. Other issues bedeviling adequate health care in the country also include inadequate health care infrastructure and equipment, lack of public and private sector coordination, favoring indigenous hires, commercial pressures in the private sector, work environments that contribute to low motivation, less than optimal productivity, high attrition, lack of planning based on staffing projection, which also leads to the overproduction of some categories of health workers. Since independence in 1960, Nigeria has had a limited scope of legal coverage for social protection. Records show that over 90% of the Nigerian population are without health insurance coverage. The inability to effectively address the country's numerous public health care challenges may have contributed to the persistent and high level of poverty and the weakness of the health care system. Issues such as political instability, corruption, limited institutional capacity and an unstable economy also noted as major factors responsible for the poor development of health services in the country. Households and individuals in Nigeria bear this burden by delaying or not seeking health care and having to pay out of pocket for health care services that are not affordable. However, the Nigerian healthcare system has evolved over the years through some healthcare reforms aimed at addressing the public health challenges confronting it. The NHIS was expected to provide social and financial risk protection by reducing the cost of health care and providing equitable access to basic health services. The most vulnerable populations in Nigeria, which include children, pregnant women, people living with disabilities, elderly, displaced, unemployed, retirees and the sick can barely access the scheme. I, I, I don't know much about this, but I think that the overall objective was to make healthcare affordable to people. That uh, if you are covered in the scheme, when you get to the hospital, you don't need to be asked this question or that question, you should be treated first. And then any other thing can come later, and then the rest of them. But, but you see, a brilliant thing in our society, Nigeria, always come up with a lot of scandal. The, 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 the scheme itself is bedeviled with uh, a lot of controversies. Uh, those at the top have been into one thing or the other. In recent time, the executive secretary uh, suspended, recall, recall or suspended, and all those things. I think they are not just, you are mentioning 10%. In a huge country like Nigeria, from the inception of the scheme, I think in 2003 or 4, uh, to date, I think we should have had um, uh, a percentage, not less than 70, 80. But 10 is grossly, grossly abysmal. NHIC uh, uh, is, has worked in other countries. Why can't it work here? So let's look at the, the bottlenecks and remove them. Free healthcare services and exemption mechanisms often arise as campaign promises of political actors to the electorate and fall short in meeting the health needs of the most vulnerable populations. 
According to Nigeria Demographic Health Survey in 2013, over 60% of pregnant women aged 15 to 49 deliver their babies at home without any antenatal care. In rural areas, this value reaches 76.9%. The situation is critical in the northeast and northwest regions of Nigeria, where over 79% of pregnant women aged 15 to 49 deliver their babies at home. Third order of the day is commencement of the Ben General Principles of Bill for an Act to amend the National Health Act 2014 to regulate international trips for medical treatment by public officers to strengthen the health institutions for efficient service delivery for related matters standing in the name of Honorable Sajos uh, Ogun. A bill for an act to amend the National Health Act to regulate and prohibit medical trip abroad by public servants passed through second reading at the House of Representatives in 2018. The sponsor of the bill, Honorable Sergius Ogu, while leading the debate on the floor of the House, explained that the amendment seeks to curb the huge foreign exchange laws to medical tourism. According to the lawmaker, over 5,000 Nigerians fly out on a monthly basis seeking medical treatment in India and other countries, while the country loses over $500 million annually, with India alone getting about $260 million of the cash flight. Mr. Speaker, this is a very harmless amendment to the National Health Act. I did, I brought a motion, I brought this, this bill to this uh, chamber sometime last year and my colleague, Honorable Bayodili, had to point to the fact that there's actually a bill, an act that is in existence. And I had to go and try and amend it because what we are trying to cure here basically is the fact that um, public servants travel for treatment. And then uh, if public servants that prepare the budget, that pass the budget, that appropriate the money, do not see enough to adequately take care of the health institution. And when they have need to fly out for treatment, they do that at government expense. How are we ever going to fix our health system? So against this background, the bill is proposed to amend the principal act to regulate international medical trip, especially by public servants who are the custodians of public institutions in the country. The arrival of the Speaker of the House of Representatives signals the commencement of the day's plenary. The lawmakers consider the different legislative documents before them. One key legislation thoroughly debated is the one seeking to amend the National Health Act and regulate national medical trips by public officers. Long title of the bill. The bill had scaled second reading and only had to be passed in the Committee of the Whole. But right from the start, it appears some lawmakers are not comfortable with the bill. The sponsor is invited to withdraw the bill, but he makes a further case for it. Apply for the withdrawal of this bill. Be guided, Honorable Sajjus. You must be guided, please. So, Mr. Chairman, what I have said severally, which I will still say here, the Asians have perfected this. The Middle East have perfected this. Today, anybody is sick, the first thing you are thinking about is either you are going to India or you are going to Dubai. When are we ever going to get there in this country? Because the point I am making, Mr. Chairman, is if those that will write the budget, those that will pass it, and those that were sent to the budget, the first, when they are not where, they, they, they hop on the first available flight out of this country, when are we ever going to manage the system that will benefit everybody? That's the point I'm trying to make, Mr. Chairman. Because we think the one-child policy in China was not a simple thing at all. It was not a nice thing for a man that wants to have eight children. So then you are told you can have only one. But look at China today. People are even going there for medical tourism in China. So the point I'm making with this is we have to start from somewhere. Because we believe if I wore those, these clothes last week and I didn't do something to it, it will not be available for me to wear today. But in Nigeria, we always believe 
yes, somehow the problem will be solved. It's never going to be solved. So I am just thinking, this is just a step. Because in this B, we are clearly saying that, look, there are chronic illnesses that you can go outside to get treatment for. But a time will come, we'll have the support here, and there will be no need for that. The bill passes through another second reading stage as lawmakers debate on its merits and demerits. The bill seeks to strengthen our health institutions and build them and trying to discourage uh, the medical tourism we have out. Just like the last speaker said, Honorable Fulata, that we should try to discourage public officers pending public funds on that. But the problem is, how do you know, like you asked, which is the public fund and which is the private fund? I want to opine and strongly that we looked at tobacco bill that I agreed that we can tax the consumption or what. But we must, as Parliament, in all honesty, seek for conscious ways to discourage medical tourism. But you cannot ban it outright, you can't stop it outright because it may be my right that may have seen an Indian doctor. I get well. I may have faith in an Indian doctor. I may have faith in an Egyptian doctor. I may have faith in Togolese doctor. Just like people have faith in several Babalawas and all what not. Depends on that. That's why I'm entitled to my personal doctor. And if my personal doctor is an Indian, so let it be. If he's from Cameroon, so let it be. But we must find a middle course on what to do to this. It does not ban foreign travel for medical treatment. It doesn't. In this country some years back, a chief of army staff traveled out of Nigeria to go and treat malaria. So it was it was public knowledge. Now I agree that there is need for us to actually improve on our health um, institution. But I have read some of the provisions of the deal. It shows that you can travel, but let us know why you have to travel medically. I do not think the bill is, uh, is, 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 is just to ban uh, travel. By the condition this man said, or the person who's seeking for this bill said, I would have been a dead person by now. And I mean it. I was here help up in Nezenima with a ruptured girl bladder. They carried out all the tests and confirmed that I was okay. I could go home. Friends insisted that I had to go out of the country. I don't pass this expense. I said, friends, only for me to go there and then discover that I have a rectal bladder. I stayed there for three months before I could be clean up. Now we are asking that that kind of condition, I should write to the general to give me a, approval, medical, what the medical lab, the private hotel, that we, we even thought it's, it's it might be good. It's not yet there. If the chairman, this should be to go to the dogs. It shouldn't be allowed. That, that shouldn't be any contemplation about this matter. Health is well. Who cannot be taken here if he is just coming back the, out of the country? The bill says that you seek approval if you're a public officer. The bill doesn't say that you only seek approval if you want to use public funds. If the bill sponsor has limited the approval process to public expenditure, then you go through this process, then one can understand it. There's so many issues with the way that the law has been couched that makes it offend this constitution, just like the chairman and some of our colleagues have noted. Let me appeal to my friend who has sponsored this, that he has brought this issue out to the public into the domain. This is probably good. Those who are in charge of the government or those who are uh, in the next level to know what to do to ensure that there is help for all uh, in, the, in, in the next government, which will be funded uh, by May 29th uh, this year. So having said so, sir, uh, may I say I think I have to step down uh, this bill because it is my responsibility no, to so step it down. Thank you, sir. Thank you very you much. Can't go back to your seat. Pa -Jok for your enriching... You can go back to your seat. Bill withdrawn by the leave of the house.
The withdrawal of the bill seeking to regulate medical tourism outside the country attracts reactions from a cross-section of Nigerians on the streets. Not because uh, the bill was, was rejected anyway, but uh, because uh, it signifies much more of a continuous uh, uh, depreciation of the health institution which has not been given any kind of attention both at the federal and the state government and i think the 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 the, the national assembly who are representative of the people should be able to voice out what the majority of nigerians want uh most of the, in, in in rejecting it most of them we are talking about their fundamental human rights being breached as Nigerians who have the right to take their children anywhere or themselves to, to be treated. But they've forgotten they were not there to represent themselves. They are representing Nigerians. And what do Nigerians feel about the state of the medical facilities in the country right now? That is what that bill is all about. It's not an attempt to muzzle their fundamental human rights. If things uh, in the medical sector are, are very fine, nobody will care where you go, to, if you like to take yourself or your children to for, for health treatment is because things are not good here and they should be able to show that commitment to demonstrate that uh, they want things to be better, they want our doctors to be well treated, they want our hospitals to be one of the best in the countries, in the world, and where other people, just like they are running to go and treat themselves uh, uh, so in other parts of the world, other people can come to Nigeria. Well, we are now in the millennium age. We are in the technological era of which we can equally boast of any best hospital in the world because we have the manpower. We have the best doctors in the world that are in Nigeria, that are Nigerians, that were educated in Nigerians, and their parents are still bona fide Nigerian citizens. And we will develop all our hospitals within the three tiers of the government, from the state, federal, state, and the local government. If we had best hospital in the local government, nobody will even come to the state hospital. If we have the best hospital in the state, nobody will even go to the federal hospitals. Because we have the manpower and we have the services, we have the resources. It is only Nigerian uh, don't know how to manage things and we are selfish. Yeah, you see, uh, treating patients actually takes a lot of things. Is a skill, you know, is taking a steps, you know, laboratory, how standard is our laboratories, theaters, equipments itself. So these are the kind of things that carries everything. Not only whether you have resources or you don't have the resources, or some people using government resources, traveling. Uh, but to my own observation, it is okay if they really provide all these equipments and uh, other things that needed for us to treat our people in Nigeria. Public affairs analysts commend the sponsor of the bill and insist that the hallowed chamber takes another look at the bill and retract its withdrawal. Whether the bill is withdrawn or not, what I'm saying is that leadership must be by example. Yes, why do we uh, criticize when we are in opposition, that this and this are not functioning, and the moment we get into position of power to effect those changes, we shy away or we do more far worse things than even those that we have taken over from them, I think uh, it is not helping our country to develop. That's my honest opinion. Well, if you look at um, uh, the primary health care, Generally, were it not for the agencies that have been uh, has been put in place, I, I don't know what would have happened to our health at the primary level. Uh, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, I think, in collaboration with that of the state, are able now to fast track certain. Uh, developmental goals. Uh, or, or, otherwise, the the primary healthcare in the country would have would have been a forgotten issue. 
But I think with that kind of collaborative effort now, something is being done in that regard. Now, if somebody send a private bill that, no, 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 those who are in charge of releasing funds or managing this thing shouldn't go outside the country to seek, but to remain here so that uh, 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 this system can be strengthened. I think, I think we, we need to pat such a person in the back for, 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 for such positive thinking. But like you said, having withdrawn the bill, I think it's very unfortunate. It would have been a good thing. Uh, normally, I, I want to say that, don't say, let this law not be made because it will affect me. What if you are no longer there? And you are on the other side and you'll be receiving the brunt of the inaction you are supposed to take when you are in that position to have affected that. So, so it is neither here nor there, but I think that it was brilliant for, 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 for that idea to have gone through. Now you can imagine 774 local governments, council in the country. You can imagine if the primary health care in those centers are adequately funded, adequately equipped, and staff, staffing is not an issue, and then there, you, you will not have the citizen running here and there looking for, for medical attention. Every community will have primary health care at their doorsteps and at affordable cost. And then forget about the contribution of the private sector. When those ones are put together, we will have healthy citizens having medical attention at their fingertips. So I don't think that is an issue. But I think that we must ask the person who sponsored that bill and then change the mind to withdraw to please kindly resubmit the bill in the nine assembly. Because I think it is something that needs to be needs to be taken on. The public officer should rather be considering can the average Nigerian who is living below the poverty line travel outside the country? Or is there any system in our constitution or in any other related um, legal document in this country that allows for you and I as average Nigerians to be flown out of this country when we have issues, medical issues? The answer is already obvious. You understand? So for the public officer to say that he's invoking his fundamental human right at the point where we are saying do not use our taxpayers' money to fund whatever medical trip you want to do outside Nigeria does not follow. You understand? I think the members of the National Assembly should give a rethink on that particular position and allow that bill to fly if they truly represent Nigerians. A consultant hematologist with the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital, Dr. Kingsley Akaba, insists poor funding, inadequate manpower, facilities, equipment are the major limitations to obtaining a standard healthcare system in the country. He agrees that it is a fundamental right for all humans, irrespective of social class, to seek medical care in any place of their choice, but urges that there should be a political will to make healthcare efficient, effective and affordable in the country. Countries like America, UK, uh, Germany, they are far, far ahead of us. All these things have been provided. So the healthcare system does not need an overall. They are now practice, they are presently, they are practicing preventive medicine, which they've even gone beyond the level where we are, because they are looking at, but we, we are still looking at how can we just, in short, I'll say we're doing management form of medicine because of the condition we find ourselves. It's not just getting the care, it's getting the medical, it's the quality of the care. What type of care are you providing? It might interest you that even the people that go outside, the doctors they see are from these countries. To tell you that in terms of manpower, knowledge, competency, we are 100%. I can say that. We have best hands in this country. They have been trained in this country, but they go outside for greener pasture. So what about if you provide all those things? We can generate income for the country. I can tell you most other countries have decided to use medical tourism as a source of revenue, which we are giving them because we are not providing the enabled environment for these services to take place. So I think that bill is a positive one to the country and a positive medical sector also. 
if we take at not just providing the bill, the bill should be uh, enacted and also provide the resources that will also change the mindset of people about the healthcare system in Nigeria.